Okay, and well, I think we will actually make a start. So good morning, everybody, and, and thanks for joining uh, this webinar this morning to talk about uh, city and growth deals and, and the, the opportunities that these deals will offer for, for manufacturers. Uh, my name is Mark Nodder. I'm Joint Chief Executive of the uh, Makers Alliance, which is a coordinating and advisory body on advanced manufacturing. It was established about a year ago. Uh, to try to really promote the, the needs and interests of industry vis-a-vis -vis the sort of manufacturing ecosystem, if you like, that is now developing uh, across Northern Ireland. So we have a role um, within, the, um, within the City and Growth Deal projects really to ensure that industry, industry's voice is heard um, and that these projects meet industry's needs and hopefully create some partnerships for, for innovation and deliver some real value. Um, our, our webinar today is uh, sponsored by Manufacturing uh, uh, NI, and uh, Manufacturing NI thankfully are, are also doing all of the tech behind the scenes and hosting this, making our job a lot easier. So thanks very much to, to Connor, uh, to Mary, and of course to Stephen Kelly for, for making it happen. So this morning, we're going to give an opportunity um, to representatives from four of the uh, City and Growth deals. Uh, to talk about those projects and, and the impact that they can have potentially for manufacturers. And hopefully we'll talk about a little bit about um, how we can actually um, build engagement between industry uh, and, and the city and growth deals. So a couple of things um, just before we get on to the, the meat of, if you like, of the menu. Um, we are recording this session um, because we're going to make it available for other folks who, who were unable to join. And also the slides that you're going to see, the presentation material, which we're going to try and zip through fairly quickly. Um, I'm sure you'd like the opportunity at a subsequent point to, to read it properly and digest. So um, a slide pack will be made available um, to everybody who's attending the webinar today uh, through Manufacturing and I, which is, which is great. Um, one other quick point, you will probably have questions about some of the stuff that's being discussed. Um, you'll see at the menu at the bottom of your screen um, a Q&A button and you can actually feed questions through to the panelists um, during, the, uh, during the webinar. Um, if there's any burning issues, they'll try and handle them as they go. If not, I'll try and sweep them up and we're, we're hoping to have time permitting about 10 minutes before we close where we, we can pick up those questions. And if, if we run out of time, um, we, we, we can always organize a bit of a question bank and we'll make sure that the representatives from the, from the appropriate deals get back to individuals with answers to questions. Okay, so um, I think without further ado, um, I, I'm gonna to move to the main part of the agenda. So we're gonna talk about four of the, of the principal city and growth deals today, namely the Belfast Regional City Deal, the Derry City Deal, the Mid-Southwest Growth Deal, uh, and, and, and finally, we're going to talk about a little bit about Causeway Coast and Glens before I, I, I conclude. Now, these, these deals will together deliver something like a billion pounds worth of investment in innovation, digital and tourism infrastructure in the economy for the next 10 years. Huge opportunity for the economy and within that, uh, a, a massive impact potentially for advanced manufacturing. So I'm going to ask, first of all, um, Mark Cairns from Queen's University to talk to us about the Advanced Manufacturing Innovation Centre, or AMIC, that is planned. Um, and in fact, it, of all of the deals that we're talking about today, is, is the one that has actually crossed the line uh, and, and, and has actually begun to, uh, to kind of uh, cut ground and start to actually build some foundations for, for the building Little Houser project. So if I can ask you, Mark, to pick up, that'd be great. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and thank you to Manufacturing and I for the opportunity uh, to present to your members. And um, so really over the next 10 minutes or so, I just really want to give you a, a bit of a flavor for, for where we are with the uh, establishment of the Advanced Manufacturing Innovation Centre. Uh, you'll note Professor Paul Maropoulos' name on the slide. Uh, uh, Paul uh, sends his apologies this morning, but he's, a, he's asked me to present uh, on his behalf. Uh, Paul is the director uh, of AMIC. Uh, I have a couple of hats within the university, and one of those is as the, the senior technology manager for AMIC. So uh, I'll touch on each of these uh, areas. I'll give you a little bit of the background to what AMIC is, a little bit of the structure and how we're, we're evolving from 
and moving from the research to the innovation side. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the, the, the industry focus on the Northern Ireland strengths and where we sit uh, as regards collaboration on the, the sort of national scene uh, for advanced manufacturing uh, within the UK. Um, yeah, so I mean, in summary, the Belfast Regional City Day list provides a substantial financial commitment from uh, UK government, the Northern Ireland executive and the, the whole Belfast region uh, city partners. Um, it represents uh, a, a £1 billion investment in key sectors within the economy uh, within Northern Ireland. And this will be delivered over the next uh, 10, 15 years. And really as a sort of a once in a generation opportunity, opportunity to accelerate uh, gr growth within uh, the region, not just the Belfast region, but the whole uh, of the, the Northern Ireland region. Next slide, please, Connor. Yeah, so within uh, the Belfast Region City Day, there's five uh, innovation uh, uh, projects uh, within the innovation pillar. The other pillars are related to the sort of tourism and, and things like that. And um, so within the five uh, innovation projects, there's this Advanced Manufacturing Innovation Centre, and it's a strategic relationship between private sector, government, uh, and the universities with a regional and national sort of mission. Now, what we're doing is we're actually building on a, a, a strong technology uh, legacy within Northern Ireland that, that already exists. Um, close to 53 years of advanced manufacturing innovation through the Northern Ireland Technology Centre, through the Polymer Process and Research Centre, and through the Northern Ireland Advanced Composites and Engineering Centre. That's supplemented by two recent Strength and Places Awards, uh, one you've probably heard of related to Artemis and, and effectively boat building within Northern Ireland. And the other one is related to photonics um, and, and the whole area of computer chips and things like that. So there's very much a collaborative ethos and industry focus. Um, this is not a university project. This is an industry led project uh, with, with university uh, involvement. And it's a significant scale as regards new investment and in, in advanced manufacturing uh, of, of actually more than 98 million. A key objective for, for Sales Dynamic is to become this, this beacon of manufacturing innovation excellence within uh, Northern Ireland so that we can attract uh, inward investment, attract talent uh, and, and create wealth, create jobs. Next slide, please, Connor. So why is it important? Um, well, uh, you know, as you can see, advanced manufacturing accounts for, uh, you know, probably more than 30% of employment and almost 60% of export, export sales. Uh, as a region, Northern Ireland is, is lower than the rest of the UK as regards R&D spend and, and productivity. These city and growth deals are really the only new money that's, that's uh, you know, effectively coming uh, to Northern Ireland. And the whole leveling up agenda um, you know, will reward places that have a coherence and a partnership uh, and a focus. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing uh, with AMIC. Next slide, please, Connor. So AMIC itself consists of three main elements. The first one is uh, Factory of the Future. Uh, this particular, uh, is a, this is a new build. Um, we're actually at Reba stage three uh, in the process of, of building this new Factory of the Future. And within this, we'll have prototyping, we'll have digital automation, photonics, we'll have work uh, that we're doing on, uh, related to the hydrogen economy. And we're in the process of growing the staff and the staff uh, numbers from 35 up to about 65. And this is based on industry facing units that already exist uh, within the universities uh, uh, within Northern Ireland. The second element is AMIC campus. Now, none of the, the uh, BRCD mon money will be spent in the AMIC campus, but this is the sort of the pipeline of R&D and innovation, how it will it'll, uh, start off in the, in, the, in, the, in the AMIC campus element and then be drawn through right through to factor the future and the productionization of processes and, and, and new products. The third element uh, um, is the AMIC NIAS, and that, that already exists um, uh, within Northern Ireland. Uh, down in the harbour area. And that's uh, related to composites, materials, characterization, And there's a, uh, a partnership there already exists between Queen's University, University of Ulster, and the National Composite Centre. 
and we have some uh, tier, tier one members as regards Spurt, Artemis, Thales, uh, 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 and a whole range of SMEs. Next slide, please. I'll not concentrate this uh, too much detail, but this gives you a, a feel for um, where AMIC will sit within the technology readiness level. For those that aren't familiar with, with TRL, sort of low TRL is very fundamental university-based research. Higher TRL is much more uh, you know, applied, uh, productionized uh, processes. And we'll sit in that, uh, what's often termed as valley of death as regards bringing uh, research and um, making it uh, into, into products effectively. Next slide, please. Yeah, so our strategic aim is to work in partnership with the manufacturing industry. The primes, yes, but SMEs in particular, because of the prevalence of SMEs uh, within Northern Ireland itself, will work with the supply chains and the trade associations to help co-design the advanced technology projects that we'll be doing, uh, re really to, to meet industry needs and priorities. And as I've mentioned before, we're working within that TRL uh, four to six on the industrialization of innovative products uh, and processes. Next slide, please, Karen. Yeah, so these are the, the sort of the markets and sectors that, that we are working with on the advanced manufacturing side. Again, probably very familiar already with this as regards uh, aerospace, materials handling in particular, uh, polymers, composites, transport, the photonics sector, uh, and also the building sector and agri-food uh, sort of area as well. If we move on to the next slide, you'll see the specific themes um, that we uh, are actually covering. So these are the, the, the primary themes that we, that they're, what we are effectively working on uh, and, and as regards digital manufacturing, automation, polymer processing, composites processing, and what's evolved over the last couple of years on, on hydrogen and green manufacturing, uh, as well as metallurgy, uh, metrology uh, as well uh, under uh, number five there. The precision and clean room is related to uh, photonics, and we'll have specialist uh, clean room facilities within Factory of the Future, which um, is, is, will be based at Global Point um, in sort of just Molusk sort of area. Uh, and I will also be touching on high value design, prototyping, uh, and, and verification as well. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is. This is where we sit um, within the, the sort of wider UK landscape. Um, to a certain extent, Northern Ireland has missed out on um, you know, what has been happening on the advanced manufacturing side within the rest of the UK. But over the last couple of years, we have worked uh, with the other growth deals within Northern Ireland, uh, and in particular with um, the high value manufacturing catapults within the, the sort of wider UK network. And we've signed MOUs with all these. And really what we're trying to do is uh, effectively lift uh, the advanced manufacturing within Northern Ireland to be on a par uh, with these high value manufacturing catapults uh, within the rest of the UK. Uh, in fact, there's a team from AMIC at the minute uh, over uh, at um, one of the high value manufacturing catapults taking best learning from what they've been doing uh, to, to inject into uh, our particular center. And we have also signed MOUs with uh, the various other uh, manufacturing research facilities, um, you know, within uh, the south, and we have a footprint uh, within the other deals and the other projects that that you'll hear about uh, and within the next uh, hour or so. So really, as I say, the city deals, the levelling up, and um, uh, this ticks a massive box uh, within that for for the on the political front. I, I'll not touch on this in, in a lot of detail, but as part of this process. And the fact that you know this whole process is being industry led, we have been talking regularly with industry. This culminated in um, a, a roadmap and exercise that we are in the process of completing, and uh, that will be disseminated uh, within within the, the group uh, over the next uh, number of weeks or so. If we move on to the next slide, please, Connor. Yeah, so this, this get, just gives you a snapshot of where we are as regards the timing of the, the actual new factory of the future. Now the work is continuing and the work uh, has begun um, as regards you know, the uh, projects and, and, and uh, working with, with industry. Uh, but this just gives you a snapshot of where we are as regards uh, the actual new building, the new uh, factory of the future. Last slide, 
please, current our next slide. Yeah, so again, this is, you know, as I mentioned, uh, AMIC is, a, is, a, is an integral part of the, the, the complete Belfast region city deal. Uh, uh, and uh, as part of the sort of, um, uh, you know, outputs from, from that, you can see here as regards, um, you know, support the creation of, of jobs, uh, really connect local people to, to better jobs that are being created. Um, and yeah, re, re, the complete re, regeneration of, of major towns and cities. Um, a couple of the snapshots there just shows you uh, some of the some of the images uh, of from our recent uh, technology roadmap where we're listening to industry in order to shape um, you know how this uh, factory of the future and and AMIC will look. So I think really, really that's just a, a very quick overview. I'm hoping that uh, maybe at a later date um, we'll be able to uh, give a little bit more uh, meat on the bones as regards uh, you know what we're planning to do uh, over the coming weeks. Uh, and months, and uh, we look forward to, to working with uh, manufacturing and I members and the SMEs uh, right across the region. Thank you very much. Mark, thanks a million for that. You've covered a huge amount of ground in a short space of time and hopefully whet the appetite of, of, of everybody that's dialed in this morning. Um, AMIC certainly is going to have a huge amount to offer uh, to the manufacturing community, and uh, I'm sure companies are going to want to know how they're going to get involved. So thanks very, very much for that. Okay, um, thanks, Mark. I'd, I'd like to introduce now Frank McGrogan. Frank is, um, is a strategic projects officer at the um, Midden East Antrim Borough. Um, and he's going to talk to us about the I4C Innovation and Clean Tech Center plan for Balamina. Frank, floor Good yours. morning. Uh, thank you, Mark, for the introduction. And uh, I welcome the opportunity to attend the webinar to, to give you an update on the I4C project, um, which has been developed under Belfast Region City Deal. And I know Mark, in a previous presentation, has given some detail about that city deal. So I'm just going to concentrate on the I4C centre itself. Um, so uh, as the name suggests, it's the I4C Innovation and Clean Tech Centre, and it's a project that we've been developing for a number of years now um, through our manufacturing task force. Um, and it's really, uh, it's a new building um, which comprises of, of a number of elements. So um, we, we, we're going to have a combination of grade A office accommodation. Um, so we don't have any of that type of accommodation in the borough for corporates at the moment. Um, and likewise, it'll be a, a key sort of a revenue uh, aspect to, to, to sustain the centre, which is obviously very important. Um, so also in, in the mix, we, we, we have SME incubation and co-working space. So we'll be targeting uh, high growth potential SMEs or uh, participants in, in accelerator programmes. So that's more for shorter stay, maybe one to two years, whereas the grade A corporates are open, that's for a longer term stay. Um, and then we have uh, what we call the iLab or Innovation Lab, which also has a clean tag training suite. Um, so that's really the in innovation engine room of I4C. Um, so the iLab will have like engineers um, facilitating the SME, um, you know, small firms. It could be a, a welding shop in Kalavaki or a farmer. You know, that's really that close access to you know innovation and supports and machinery. Um, not on the same scale as Amic, obviously, but. You know, having that facilitated expertise and access to outside experts in, in that venue. So putting a lot of stock by, by, by the iLab. And then, I mean, council is not in the, in the business of delivering uh, innovation programs or running innovation centers. So we will appoint uh, a delivery partner to run I4C and manage the building and, and develop and, and run uh, specialist programming uh, around innovation and clean tech. Um, so again, the, the Manufacturing Task Force uh, Council will be working very closely with, with them from 2019. I have a slide on, on, I, on the MTF in, in a second or two. Um, and it really has allowed that close to industry focus and, and, and targeting of, of our proposal. Um, strategic partners for I4C have included the Northern Regional College. Um, we have a close working relationship with AMIC and, and CASE, the Centre for Advanced Sustainable Energy. And likewise, we're, we're having conversations with Sidra and all sorts of others at the minute about that ecosystem that we're developing. Uh, currently scheduled to open in 2027. We, we haven't just got to the same point as, as AMIC yet, but we're, we're getting there. Um, and we're hoping that the iLab uh, element starts earlier because uh, innovation doesn't start in 2027. It needs to start ASAP. So uh, we'll be looking at all those aspects. Next slide, please, Connor. Thanks. 
Um, so the key objectives, uh, just a number, a number of objectives, and, and I think there'll be a common theme coming through all our presentations. And it's really about developing the ecosystem uh, for a culture of innovation and collaboration, and particularly for, for mid East Antrim, that's uh, the manufacturing sector. And you'll all be aware that we had a, a series of economic shocks and, and continue to have that with the recent announcements of job losses at, at Caterpillar. So we really need to, to do something to reboot the local economy and, and create that culture of, of, of innovation. Um, so we're particularly keen, given the strengths of, of uh, hydrogen and, and the likes of Rybus, <coughs> excuse me, in, in the borough to develop um, a clean tech hub. Uh, the borough is a clean tech hub for, for Northern Ireland. Um, so helping businesses exploit the clean growth opportunity, uh, particularly in the hydrogen economy. Um, so the, the iLab uh, business or the iLab makerspace. Um, so I mean, that's the, the whole culture of SME innovation and, and culture of making. And then we have the, the you know, uh, an equipped uh, clean tech training suite with the focus on the clean tech sector. So we'll have equipment about worth about a million pounds plus in that center, you know, electrolyzers and other sorts of demonstrators. <clears throat> so the other themes uh, that were coming through, <clears throat> get there eventually, here we go. Um, so I foresee and um, iLab programming is to uh, focus on inclusive uh, employment opportunities for all. So we'll have programming for, for school children for in, uh, inspiration, um, right through to uh, targeted programs for, for local disadvantaged communities. And, and I mean, there's several pockets of, of those in, in the East Antrim. And, and the last but not least is, is a flagship for the regeneration of St. Patrick's Barracks in Valamina. So that's a, a 15 hectare, it's a former MOD uh, site in, in the, the centre of town or close proximity to the centre of town. So we're using the, the whole innovation uh, and I4C as a driver for, for, for spin out and, and spin offs, for example, a smart district in, in Valamina. So huge opportunities around just the whole innovation culture that I4C will develop. So Mark, if we can, or Mark, if Connor, if we can move to the next slide. Um, so Manufacturing Task Force, a, a reference that was established in, in 2018 after those uh, economic shocks. Uh, it was currently chaired by Graham Whitehurst. Um, you will see Graham in the picture up in the, the top left corner. I'm sure most of you will have come across Graham at some point. Um, but in terms of membership, there, there's currently uh, over 40 companies uh, represented under that manufacturing umbrella. Um, 8,000 employees, and we also have a number of, of stakeholder organizations uh, from Invest NI right through to Manufacturing NI itself. Uh, Council currently acts as the secretariat for, for the um, MTF, and uh, you know, as, as a result of, of the initiatives and effort um, under that collaboration, we've secured about 800,000 uh, since uh, 2020 alone. Uh, for a number of projects, everything from skills training academies and welding and and, and, and we currently have the ongoing Hydrogen uh, Training Academy and, uh, that I'll reference in, in my next slide. Um, we've played, uh, the Manufacturing uh, Task Force has, has played a key role as a, a reference on, on the development of, of the whole concept of I4C in the iLab, and also in a, a number of other initiatives I've just referenced, the Buy and Supply Portal, which was particularly beneficial during the COVID period as, as it identified um, obviously sources of of materials and, and, and suppliers for uh, PPOE or, or PPE equipment, sorry. Um, and then um, other, uh, you know, similar to the Manufacturing Task Force, um, uh, you know, to, to, to Manufacturing and I, we hold webinars and dissemination events uh, of benefit to, to our members. Uh, and we and, uh, promote and, and develop a program participation to member firms and, and organizations in, in a whole range of initiatives from digital surge up to um, whatever current programs that are, you know, be it Sidra or others that are particularly beneficial to them. Um, my last slide, just Connor, thank you. Um, so in terms of, of, of that whole focus on clean tech, so uh, we're currently building what I call a clean tech uh, sector project pipeline uh, that'll take us from today right up to 2027 uh, when uh, I4C opens. So, you know, I've just referenced a, a number of, of, of those initiatives. I'm, I'm not going to dwell on any great length on each of them, but so uh, with the council, um, we, we've just finished a clean tech readiness uh, assessment pilot uh, where we work with six local uh, manufacturing firms and, and the MTF, uh, just to look at their present uh, footprint in, in the whole environment and clean tech sector and, and, and plotted a, a 
a way forward. So we have a firm of external consultants helping to do that. So the Hydrogen uh, Skills Training Academy, the Hydrogen Training Academy is a 700,000 pound project, which has been led by council. And we have a number of, of industry and education partners from colleges, universities, and University of Birmingham, um, and, and deliver an accredited training. And that's particularly for retraining for, for, for you know, plumbers and gas fitters uh, into that um, you know, emerging hyd hydrogen economy. So a lot of efforts and, and early uh, indications are that that's a very, uh, it's been really well received and, and practical benefit. So that finishes later this year. Um, we have uh, one of our industry-led uh, firms, uh, Smith's Engineer, has just received a letter of offer from Invest NI for a collaborative growth network uh, themed around cleantech. So that will run between now July and, and March next year. So again, uh, big emphasis on, on industry participation in, 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 the, in the whole sector. Um, Mark referenced in, in his earlier slide about the collaboration um, with um, AMIC, uh, and, and uh, so we're, we're currently working on a, a joint project with, with AMIC. It's a Northern Ireland Hydrogen Technology Accelerator and a Palomina Hydrogen Hub. So uh, we've secured a, a package of 15 million pounds funding from the Northern Ireland Complementary Fund, and we're currently uh, developing a, a, pro a project outline business case, uh, which will involve industry test beds and all kinds of things. So a really good news story on that one. Uh, we're working with the CASE, the Centre for Advanced Sustainable Energy Occident Project. So we're looking to that. We're involved in that feasibility study. And then there's a lot of activity happening by industry partners. Uh, like again, some of you'll be aware that B9 um, and, and partners secured as one million pounds at BES funding um, to, to do a feasibility study on, on the whole power gas and, and hydrogen mm -hmm. and, and power and the management of it and, and storage. So that, that's ongoing. Um, our partners down in, in Kilruth um, and, and Valley Longford, um, EPE UK Limited, are, have uh, announced that it was last, that this time two years ago now, um, at Kilruth Energy Park. So, a planned £600 million investment in, in, in Kilruth in, in an energy park. Um, so, um, equally, Lauren, and not to be outdone, I mean, the site of Valley Longford, but it's also a, a big opportunity for a free port and green port. Um, and we're currently working with partners there. So, and that's just a short capture. There's a whole range of initiatives that we want to work with and work closely with industry and our local manufacturing uh, firms up until uh, the I4C and, and then continue thereafter. So that's just a very quick snapshot of, of, the, um, of, of what we're to, hoping to do at, at I4C. Final slide is um, just my contact details and, and likewise the, um, the uh, website address for our investment website and, and council. Uh, so just want to, again, thank you for the opportunity to, to, to present this morning. Frank, thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Um, absolutely tons going on um, in, in Mid and East Antrim. And it's fantastic actually to see how, you know, what's been, a, if you like, a very traditional manufacturing base historically is now pivoting and really embracing innovation and actually making yourselves uh, you know, a centre of excellence for, for, for clean tech, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So well done and well done to the manufacturing task force as well for the great work that they've been doing uh, to actually build the foundation for, for the project now to be constructed on. So fantastic. Uh, Frank, thank you very, very much. Okay, thanks. Um, Justin, Justin Quinn from Ulster University is going to take us uh, on a little journey now. Um, so we, we've just talked about two projects that fall within the Belfast regional uh, city deal. We're now moving to the Derry city deal um, and, and the, the, the flagship project, I guess, from a manufacturing perspective is the Centre for Industrialization, Digitalization, Robotics and Automation, um, short known as SIDRA. So Justin, I'll hand over to you to talk about, um, to talk about SIDRA. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, yep. Yeah, so the guys so far have described the, the, the city deal format and the Belfast Regional City Deal. Within the Northwest region, the, the Derry City Deal offers exactly the same format. So the, the targets overall are the same around regional growth, around uh, expansion of existing resources that are in the district, around job creation, and all the things that will lead to uh, a better uh, industry, a better manufacturing industry in the area. I should stress, uh, along with our colleagues here, Mark and Frank and, and Jill and, and so on, the, uh, the city deals cover the entire region of Northern Ireland. So the, 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 the idea that we all work together is central to this, and we hope to gain a great benefit 
from the wide range of, of facilities that will be available us around city deals, but also the wide range of skills and, and things that are there to support industry. So we'll move on a, a slide, uh, Connor, and we'll have a look and see what, what uh, CIDRA is made up of. So the Centre for Industrial Digitalization, Robotics and Automation is, the, is one of the innovation projects within the Derry City deal. There, there are a number of innovation projects in the Derry City deal. Uh, that is CIDRA, uh, a cognitive analytics uh, project around data, and then a medical project around personalized medicine. The one most significant for manufacture is CIDRA, though. And, and within the area, we have a number of uh, specialist uh, skills and specialist research centers and R&D centers that are situated on campus here at McGee. And along with other city deal projects, the objective here is to bring that to industry. It, it, it's to bring ideas out, it's to bring support out, and it's to bring an ecosystem of development to create agile businesses, not only in the Northwest region, but also across Northern Ireland and, and forge those links beyond. I think it's clear from that every university has that, uh, has that link with centers in England, centers in the States, centers elsewhere around the world where we have our research links and we have our connections and all the network exploiting that network for the business community in Northern Ireland is something that the city deals really should be doing. And it's something that we, we concentrate on within SIDRA. Giving you an overall uh, view of the proposal, you're looking at an around 25 million of investment for SIDRA specifically. It, it covers uh, part of a 500 million regional investment in, in the Northwest region area. 250 of that roughly comes from city deal, but because of our proximity to the border, there's the opportunity for to have that matched from the, the, the government in the south to bring it up to in around 500 million over the next uh, maybe 10 to 20 years. CIDRA specifically, you're looking at a building development of in around 20 to 30,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet of open, open development space, showcase space to bring along the technologies that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, around 9 million a budget for equipment purchase and a number of other things then that keep us keep us in, 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 in good financial standing around a 10 year plan and sustainability models and so on. But let's get to the part that, that, that certainly I find most interesting and I think most companies find interesting. If you just go back one corner there, you're a wee bit head off me. The, uh, the CIDRA project is made up of three key areas. And these are three key areas that we have expertise in. And we see these as underpinning all of the other projects and providing support for all the other projects and providing a route for all the other projects to make, a, to make gains and to work together to create the ecosystem that we all desire within Northern Ireland. And those areas are cognitive robotics, smart robotics, this is different from what exists at the minute. These are robots that can make decisions. These are robots that can generate data and generate feedback and interactive behavior that allows you to try and stem that gap that there is in the workforce at the minute. Stem that skills gap, allow us to reskill people, allow us to reform the factory that we envisage at the minute. Metal additive, in terms of, we, we have quite a bit of expertise here on and I'll talk about this later as well. We've quite a bit of expertise here on metal additive, printing metals, and then smart connected manufacture. And that is the data gathering, the data analytics, the machine learning, all the tools that you need to have smart manufacture. So that's data-driven manufacture. And they feed into industry 4.0. So if we have a look in detail, then we're, we're going to move ahead now, Connor. Thank you. If we have a look in detail at, at what will be done in the center, essentially it's, it's a, a source of advanced expertise. <laughs> for industry 4.0. We will have a template model factory in that 10,000 square feet space. That'll allow companies to come in and facilitate them to learn about IoT, to learn about robotics automation, and then to have pilot plants developed within that so that you can develop a pilot plant on our shop floor, we'll develop it for you, and then transport it to your factory floor, working, knowledgeable, and, and, and in a way where we learn and you learn together. It allows companies to see the digital technologies. 
you know, digital within industry is the massive push at the minute. And, and we hope that within SIDRA, our central pillar of digitalization really does start to, to provide a digital transformation demonstrator. We can look at evaluation of designs, and I know everybody does this around rapid implementation. We have some lovely additive manufacturing technologies there that can, that can make you complex parts and generatively designed parts very, very quickly and allow you to test them then too. We have a range of the testing facilities to allow you to do that. So if you move on a slide, uh, Connor, we can have a look then and see. Uh, test beds are, are part of everything that goes on at the minute. Uh, within Ulster, we, we, we manage a 50 million pound smart manufacturing data hub project, which I can talk about in a second. And that gives us the opportunity to develop what's called virtual test beds. Test beds that have accessibility to SMEs beyond anything that exists at the minute. Uh, we build on expertise that's in the Intelligent Systems Research Center, that is machine learning, robotics, vision, haptic feedback, and so on. And what we want is a regional hub uh, from where these partnerships between university and industry can be grown. Some of you will have, have spoken to us before. We've done quite a bit of industry engagement around uh, what SIDRA should look like. So if we move on then to near enough the final slide here, uh, guys, so looking at the model, how do we establish this? What's the establishment roadmap? How do we know that this is going to be a good idea and be successful? Well, SIDRA feeds in along with a couple of other things to this smart manufacturing ecosystem in Northern Ireland. And obviously AMIC will feed in and the other projects will feed into this too in different ways. Specifically, SIDRA will feed into it via the robotics, the automation, the metal additive manufacturing. Our smart manufacturing data hub, which is running at the minute, uh, 50 million pounds of IUK money, will feed into it by providing the technology and the underlying expertise to exploit data in the company for smart decision making. And like most universities, this is underpinned and backed up by two uh, really experienced uh, research centers in terms of the Intelligent Systems Research Center for Robotics and Automation and Siri or the Center for Engineering and Renewable Energy around manufacturing and materials. And don't forget, it also spans into other Ulster research, the likes of composites, where automation becomes really important, the likes of other areas there where we can feed into it and use our skills. And in terms of roadmap, you're looking at the smart manufacturing project underpinning everything at the minute, developing the data conduits, moving on to Siri, moving on then and to the ISRC. That feeds into the portfolio development for SIDRA. And by the time we come around three years time, roughly then SIDRA can be established and it can exploit all the work that we've done so far. So if we move on one more, Connor, then we can finish off. I'm keen to keep you on time because really presentations are great, but questions are a whole lot better to, to work out what we're doing. So a quick overview of what the expertise is in terms of cognitive robotics, you're looking at automation systems, intelligent data-driven systems with AI capability, with machine learning capability that we have on site at the minute. You're looking at vision systems for a acquisition of, of, of vision data to identify things, handling, touch, recognition, feedback, AR, VR, all the systems that you normally would associate with being next generation manufacturing technology, but really they're here today. They just need exploited. In terms of metal additive, we have high fidelity print, or we, we will put in high fidelity printing. So you're looking at a, a high fidelity powder printing for very high value add parts, but also then high volume printing in arc additive processes. And this is roadmap to many, many industries, not least the machining industries that form a large part of Northern Ireland. And then finally, smart connected manufacture. Our smart manufacturing data hub that we manage as part of a UK wide project uh, is a digital infrastructure development vehicle for manufacturing industry. And this, this UK wide effort will create that ecosystem that lets companies recognize the value of their data and subsequently make the decisions to allow them to get best value and sweat the assets that are in their companies. So look, that covers what we're doing in SIDRA and uh, hopefully assists you to, to, to place it in the landscape of all the city deals at the minute. So I'm very conscious of time. So I'm gonna hand over back to Mark and thank you for your attention.
Mark, it's all yours. Justin, that's absolutely brilliant. And again, just so many exciting projects there in the pipeline that you know the manufacturing community really needs to get 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 stuck into. And I was really heartened as well. You you, you made a comment, or, or it, part of your sort of scene set at the start was that whilst this is you know it's within the umbrella of the Dairy City deal, and clearly you you at McGee will will be the host for the project. This is something for you know companies throughout Northern Ireland. Uh, so we're not just limiting the, the, the outreach to the Northwest. And that's really important, I think, for, for all of these city deals, because what we're hoping to get at the end is, you know, a joined up ecosystem that benefits everybody, that kind of lifts all of the boats. Uh, and, and, and so uh, I thought you were absolutely bang on the money there. Justin, thank you very much for that. It's brilliant. And we'll try to any questions at the end. Um, I'm going to introduce now Jill Cush. Uh, Jill, you've been very patient um, waiting for your, for your turn here. So Jill is Deputy Chief Executive at Southwest College um, and, and is going to talk to us about the Engineering Skills Innovation Centre, which will form part of the uh, Mid-Southwest Growth Deal. So Jill, you're very welcome. Mark, thank you very much um, and good morning, everybody. Um, thanks also to Manufacturing NA for inviting us along. Um, I'm here to give just a, a very quick overview of the ESIC project, Engineering Skills and Innovation Centre, which will form part of the Mid-Southwest um, Growth Deal, Regional Growth Deal. So that covers the council areas, Armagh, Banbridge, Craigavon, Romana, Oma, and Mid-Ulster. Um, so I'm from Southwest College. There are um, six um, colleges in Northern Ireland, Southwest covers for Mana and Oman, I'm based here in Dungannon. Um, and across the sector, we would have about 8,000 engineering enrollments um, and advanced manufacturing enrollments every year. Um, so we're a, a very significant provider of skills for the engineering sector. So if we move on, um, I suppose in terms of, of the background to the project and, and where we are, um, it's really about um, a need um, within the region that we're in for a centre around three areas, absolutely around skills development, um, around SME innovation, but also around productivity, which is a key challenge for the companies in our region. So Mid, Mid South West is about two fifths of the manufacturing employment in Northern Ireland. Um, and as I said, a key challenge is productivity, productivity. And we know that the, the levels are lower than the rest of the UK. Also in the region, we have a very well established um, cluster of companies in the materials handling sector, acquiring construction. Um, so we have a, a huge supply chain, a number of large companies um, in this sector. Um, and it's really to support those companies um, and allow them access to, to the latest technologies and, and skills that they need. Within the region, um, Southwest College is the FE sector engineering hub. Um, so we work collaboratively with all six colleges um, in terms of skills development and curriculum development aligned to the needs of industry. And that's important. And I suppose it makes us a natural home for the, for the ASIC center in a region where we don't have any physical university um, footprint. And working closely with industry, we're absolutely aware of the ongoing and very acute demand for skills needs and particular higher level skills needs um, as companies try to move forward and, and to future proof their business plans and their business cases, skills very much comes to the fore. And I suppose in terms of need, what, what is critical is this networking capability um, for the region. So networking across Northern Ireland into the wider UK or NI and wider UK manufacturing innovation ecosystem and reaching out. Um, the concept for ESIC is that it will be a small centre. We're looking at somewhere between um, 1,500 to 2,000 square metres, um, but networking and allowing, I suppose, a doorway access into other partnership projects is going to be critical. So if we want to move on to the next slide, which just highlights the objectives of, of the centre, the objectives of the project, and really they are fourfold. One is to have a physical facility in the region, um, and that's critical. Um, so there are so many opportunities for collaboration out there, but in the region where we serve, there is no natural home where those opportunities can, can find an easy doorway in. 
a facility um, around training, so to increase both the range of training and the level of training and skills development within the region. And very importantly, um, the aspiration for ASIC is that it will be mimic a realistic manufacturing environment. Um, so skills development will be carried out in that, in that area. For innovation support, um, and predominantly ESIC will focus on um, SME innovation support. So the college sector, the FE sector, um, has a strong track record in terms of working with SMEs, which we would come across through our various skills training programs, apprenticeships, higher level apprenticeships. And we'll be building on that and making that of higher quality and more focused. And then as I've touched on the collaboration space. So ESIC will act as a vehicle to improve the collaboration between industry and education. So we do that very strongly, both in colleges and in their own universities. Um, but it's really to make that better, to look at better ways of skills forecasting, much better ways of trying to capture ongoing need and collectively and collaboratively working with industry to future scope of what will be needed in the long term. We're looking to um, develop higher level, more flexible skills training programs. And I see there was a question had come in the chat of how will um, organizations who are not from a manufacturing background tap into this network? And so absolutely that's something that, that as we expand and, and go forward, that we know that it's just not manufacturing companies, that collaboration with other sectors is going to be key. Um, so that's an aspect. Um, the R&D and innovation aspect, and then the tapping into the, the wider ecosystem. And we work um, partners around the table. We have an MOU originally signed with, with the AMIC project or whatever, and we see the great networking they have done into the wider um, UK uh, manufacturing ecosystem or whatever, and it's really collaborating and tapping into that. In terms of the target groups, Connor, if we want to look at the next slide. So four main target groups, absolutely industry, um, startups and SMEs in terms of their skill supports needs. Um, existing college students and employers, and as I said, we have around um, 8,000 across the sector. And most of those um, learners come into colleges are actually learners who are, who are industry, who are based in industry through apprenticeship schemes, higher level apprenticeship schemes, or who are, are tapping into part-time programs. So that's, that's going to be key in terms of feeding in. Um, a remit to look and work with schools to raise the profile of the engineering sector in this region and wider across the across Northern Ireland in terms of the STEM agenda and in terms of the female gender agenda and trying to get more people interested in the sector and also a remit to work with stakeholders through industry bodies through the local councils who are driving forward the growth deals um, and partners around the table um, and associations. And then finally to wrap up, just to look at, I suppose, the key functions of the center, the primary functions as we move forward. So number one is aligning skills to industry demand to address the current skill shortages and the projected future needs. Um, so we're looking at across a number of priority technology areas and very, very critically, we want to limit those areas that they're aligned to the needs of the region in terms of size and scale. So we're looking, um, at product control systems, PLCs, hydraulics, pneumatics, um, some elements of robotics and, and automation in terms of, of what goes on linked to the, to the region. And then for the materials handling, absolutely the um, automation for welding, joining, fabrication, machine cutting, that types of things. So very much focused on the needs of the region. Um, in terms of the functions, we're also looking at the innovation support um, for companies um, and SMEs. So we know there is really world-class research goes on in the universities in Northern Ireland. Um, and this is trying to distill that out and make that relevant to the, the very small startup companies in our region in that manufacturing space um, and, and to support them as they move forward. Um, the network facilitation for the region um, and to um, support that. So for example, in the region we have um, over the last few years, um, very good developments in terms of industry collaboration. For example, we have the mega network of engineering employers who are really making brilliant progress in terms of coming together and articulating the skills needs for engineering and 
we want to support that. ASIC will want to support that to grow and mega and, and other industry players will, will be absolutely essential in, in driving that forward. And then we have the access to facilities and technologies within the center, within that uh, physical presence um, in, in the center. So where we are at the minute in terms of the Mid-Southwest deal, um, we're at strategic outline case. So um, there's a plan that that will be ready for December aligned with the other um, growth deal projects in Mid-South Wales, Mid-Southwest. And I suppose our key driver within that is looking at the long-term sustainability of, of ASIC um, in terms of how we can sustain the revenue generating streams to keep it growing, to develop it, to grow it, um, and to make sure that, that it takes its place in the wider um, Northern Ireland manufacturing um, ecosystem. So that marks a whistle stop through um, for me. Thanks again. Um, and thanks. I, I think it's been valuable, certainly, for me to get um, personally to get a, a, up to speed with all the other projects as well. Um, and hopefully, this will be um, a sort of a new collaboration with all projects around the table to, to move forward. So thank you. Appreciate it. Jill, thank you very, very much. Uh, and, um, and we appreciate, you know, that, that you guys are, if you like, at a more formative stage in terms of your thinking. But um, I think a lot of what you talked about resonates very, very strongly. Um, Makers Alliance was, was in Dungannon last week for, for our, our panel meeting. And we were reminded, of course, of what a kind of, uh, you, you know, what a buzz there is about Mid Ulster. What, and it truly is the beating heart, actually, of, of, of manufacturing. Some fantastic companies and the work that has been done by mega in the last two or three years really is is superb so best wishes to you all there uh, and and anything we can all do to to help build um your 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 case as you take this forward so thank you very very much for that um we're a bit tight for time but i think there's a couple of questions so i've i've picked up a few of them um in the chat boxes as we've as we've been going through and I think they've been answered well, but there's a point that was made by um, our sponsor, uh, Stephen Kelly, uh, at one point. And thanks, Stephen, again for for allowing us to to, to use the facility uh, and to to dip in the resources of your team today, um, at manufacturing. And I thanks for that. Stephen was making the point in the chat that when you look at all this collectively, what what these city and, and regional growth deals offer manufacturing is nothing short of a generational change. We really mustn't blow it. You know, we're at this pivotal point now, and it's critical, absolutely critical, that we in the manufacturing community uh, take a lead role. You know, Mark, Justin, uh, Jill and Frank have said they, they're looking for the industry engagement. They want industry to inform the projects that are, are, are ultimately being hosted by the academic institution. So we really all need to get to get stuck into this. So I guess, can I just throw a question? That, uh, if it's OK, time permitting, I'll just throw it to to Mark and to Justin, maybe start with you first, Mark. How 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 do companies get involved in what's going on? Because I think you've painted a very exciting picture. People will be going away asking themselves, how do I get involved in this? How do I make connections? How do I get my voice heard? What would be your advice? Yeah, yeah. well, definitely through uh, Manufacturing NI as a good uh, first port of call. Um, yeah, uh, and you know we have we just recently just released uh, an option for a, a newsletter, um, you know, um, you, for the uh, Amic project and the other uh, de de uh, projects that are happening uh, at Queens. So I would, I would encourage that, and again we can share that with uh, with the manufacturing NI team to to sort of spread the news. So the comm side uh, has really started to kick off. Uh, over the over the, the next while, there will be a bit of publicity. We're hoping significant publicity with the re, with the release of the Northern Ireland Technology Roadmap. We're expecting that around late summer or so. And as, and as I said in the chat, that'll that'll be uh, you know shared widely. So yeah, yeah. So there's just some of the elements um, that that we would we would suggest as regards engaging. And um, we're particularly interested in the SME engagement uh, within Northern Ireland, and and that's right right across the board you know small one two three member companies right through to you know the below 50 or whatever and um, so yeah great thanks mark and that's such an important message i think for our smes to you know for them to understand that this isn't just for if you like the big global logos this is this is something that's that's going to be for everybody justin is there anything you'd like to add to that well well there is we're, we're very fortunate actually at this for ourselves here in Ulster to have got the, the data project, which means we'll be proactively going out to companies over the next uh, 36 months. 
uh, to visit you, to get you involved in the data acquisition project, to get you involved in the smart manufacturing data project. So when we're out there, it gives us a fantastic opportunity to see what your needs are for the likes of these city deal projects and to see in our case, what your needs are around the specialist areas that we've concentrated on to ensure that, that companies get the best opportunity to be there first. We have some, uh, we have some lovely opportunities within the data project as well. So while we're out talking to you, we can also give you the opportunity to become part of that and be funded to be part of that, to develop that within your company. Why am I saying that? Why am I pushing on data? Data can be used to allow you, to help you, to facilitate you, to make those decisions further on down the line. And, and I think everybody in business will realize, obviously, that uh, exploiting the technology decisions you make to the nth degree is really what you want to do. Technology moves very quickly, so the decisions have to be right. They have to be quick, and they have to be uh, for the time that you have within your company. So that engagement piece, as well as what Mark talked about in terms of newsletters and all the, all the standard ways of, of, of attracting uh, industry into us, we have a great opportunity to go out proactively. So uh, within our program, we'll have business development officers and engagement officers that will, will be on your door to find out what your needs are. Uh, and, and that will feed in hopefully to the, the development of the program. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much, Justin. Um, before I kind of close, uh, Mary, if, if I may, I, I see you're online and, and I just really give you the opportunity uh, if you wanted just to sort of add anything to, to, to what's already been said or just to, to kind of underline how people can actually obtain these resources subsequent to the, uh, to the webinar. Mary. Yeah, and thanks, Mark, for doing such a great job, Sharon, and to all the speakers today. And it's really obvious that we have a great ecosystem here of experts um, through our university and our um, local college system, um, as well as other stakeholders. I know the Digital Catapult are online as well. So we're, we're very, very privileged um, to have that ecosystem of support um, with a culmination of over £200 million worth of investment in all of those these projects. This is as you say, Mark, it's something that we, we can't um, we can't underestimate the, the, the power of what we can do here um, as well. So, I mean, it's just I think Northern Ireland in general, we punch well above our weight in terms of our innovation capability compared to the rest of, of UK and indeed Europe. And it's just really leveraging, you know, the, the advantages that we are taking from these um from these city growth deals to really, um, I suppose, take that to the next level. And engagement is really key here. You know, we, Manufacturing and I, we are engaged with all of the, the players um, around here today, and we will continue to do that. We will continue to work in terms of the skills strategy to ensure um, that those skills are in place, um, particularly in the area of digitalization and the Industry 4.0 skills. So we will continue to work um, with the Department of Economy to ensure that the, the skills roadmap is, is in place as well to take those forward. So... Just on behalf of my, I know Stephen's online as well here, and um, just on behalf of Manufacturing NI, thanks to Invest NI as well for sponsoring today and to all of our panelists and to you as the chair. Thank you. Not at all. Mary, that's fantastic. Thanks. So thanks, everybody. Thanks to um, Mark Cairns from, from Queens, from Frank McGrogan from Mid East Antrim Borough, Justin uh, Quinn from Ulster uh, at McGee, and, and Jill, thanks very much to you as well from Southwest. Uh, thanks to all who've participated. You've heard masses of information. The slide deck will be circulated subsequently. This is the start of a tent. This is us just really setting the scene to whet the appetite of manufacturers. And as all of, the, of all of the panelists have said, there will be programs of engagement. Manufacture, manufacturing and I, of course, will be at the heart of that. Makers Alliance will also help facilitate. So uh, this is the start of what I hope is going to be some really constructive and exciting conversations going forward. So thanks, everybody, for your time. Uh, and I'll let everyone get back to your day jobs. Uh, have a great day. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.